Hi guys, it is a nasty cold blah winter day here in the end times in the Doomsday Cat House where I'm house sitting for a few days, me and the 11 cats. Somehow the 12 of us here have stumbled into Tuesday morning, December 23rd, 2014. So Tuesday is the day I bring you my wacky conspiracy theory rant and good God. And the subject this week obviously is about this North Korea hacking Sony Incorporated. And uh, unless you live under a rock, you know the basics of this one. And so I, I'm not going to spend 30 minutes rehashing that one. I just love this. I mean, from a conspiracy wacko point of view, you cannot lose being a conspiracy wacko talking about cyber attacks because even the real story is a conspiracy theory. You cannot lose. There is no way to lose being a conspiracy wacko talking about cyber attacks. If you're talking about the whoever really did it, that's a conspiracy of itself. And then you get your other conspiracies as other people deny who did it and say so you cannot lose. It is a hell of a day on the planet for conspiracy wackos and, and make no mistake about it guys, this thing going on in North Korea and Sony and I guess even South Korea talking about their nuclear power plants being hacked probably by North Korea. You know, this is the opening salvo. You, you guys do understand this, that going into the end times, that the cyber attacks uh, are, are, are going to just become daily news. The shit that you're seeing about Sony uh, on page one of the New York Times, in a year from now, it's, it's barely going to be mentioned you know, in the back pages of the newspaper. Something of, of that small of magnitude. But the nuclear power plant uh, and grid attacks are going to get a little bit higher in the news. So, anywho, who the hell, I mean, who the hell knows? Who the hell knows who, uh, who hacked Sony or not? Uh, whether Barack Obama and the FBI claiming that North Korea did it, I, I don't know. I give that explanation about as much weight as any other one. Uh, you know, who the hell knows? But, so I just took a survey of my usual conspiracy wackos just to check in with them. And I was a little bit disappointed in, uh, in a lot of them. Like, here is before it's news. They're, they're agreeing with Barack Obama and the FBI that it was North Korea. Godlike production, some of my favorite conspiracy wackos on the planet, they haven't weighed in with it. They've just opened it up to their bulletin board for all of their conspiracy wackos. You can just go in and vote for your uh, your decision. Now, I'm, I'm going to get to Alex in a minute here. Now, one that I, that I always like to check in with is my conspiracy theorist buddy, Mark Dice. Uh, I often say that, that Mark Dice and I agree more on wacky conspiracy theories than, than anyone else. Mark Dice and Hambone Little Tail both understand that 9-11 was an inside job. Mark Dice and I both understand remember that there's two people who are claimed to be killed by remotely messing with their cars that the first one, that journalist who I'm embarrassed to admit escapes my name, Mark Dice and I realized that that journalist was taken down in an inside job, that his computer of his car was hacked, but we also understand that that actor, I think from Fast and Furious, was not hacked. 
And Mark Dyson and, un and I understand that anyone who thinks that Sandy Hook was an inside job is a mentally ill, whacked out nut job who is an embarrassment to other conspiracy theorists. So anyway, I'm always interested to hear what Mark Dice, how he weighs in. He is actually thinking it was an inside job from a Sony, a disgruntled Sony employee. That's the one that Mark uh, Dice is going on. So what is good old Infowars.com, good old Alex Jones, although this is uh, his little, his little right-hand henchman, this little prick, Paul Joseph Watson over there at Infowars, you know, that Alex Jones is passing the baton of conspiracy wackos. His article about it, Sony hack is almost certainly an inside job. Obama administration blames North Korea uh, and its allies with zero evidence whatsoever. So they're claiming they're completely uh, throwing out that uh, that one about North Korea, any, any time that Alex Jones Incorporated gets a chance to trash Barack Obama, he will take it. So anyway, they seem to be leaning towards the inside job from Sony too, but uh, I, I did like it finally at the bottom. Uh, they, they, just, they just introduce they just introduce this idea and not, you know, at the very bottom of the article, this is the only place I found this. I was a little disappointed. I thought that somewhere I was going to find that it was actually the U.S. government, Barack Obama and the CIA hacking Sony to stir up, uh, fom to foment dissent to against that little maggot over there in North Korea whose name I will not even mention. That, that little maggot who the CIA needs to rub out. Anyway, uh, that, that's a whole nother rant. I'll probably get to it at the end of this one. Anyway, so I thought that somewhere I was going to find the wacky uh, conspiracy theory that it was the CIA hacking Sony so Americans would support rubbing out that little uh, dictator over there in North Korea who's now threatening to blow up uh, the United States because Barack Obama is blaming him for something he something didn't do. But no, that was close. I will just read how Paul Joseph Watson finishes out his story. Given how the White House and top lawmakers have breathlessly seized upon the hack to reanimate zombie cybersecurity legislation that was dead and buried before the convenient Sony hack provided fresh justification, past history suggests that the prime suspect for the hack should be the U.S. government itself. Those who accused the U.S. of being behind the two other most alarming cybersecurity cyber attacks in recent years, the Stuxnet and Flame virus, were labeled conspiracy theorists, but it subsequently emerged that both of those attacks were the work of the United States and Israel and the six major Hollywood studios also stand to gain from legislation to tighten control over online piracy, which will be fast-tracked in part because of the Sony hack. Uh, anyway, uh, so what 
Paul Watson is suggesting here with zero evidence, zero evidence whatsoever uh, except for past history is that the U.S. government faked this, this false flag, the false flag attack blaming North Korea not so much so they could move in there and wipe out that little maggot uh, over there in North Korea, but to fast track these internet uh, control bills, uh, clamping down on internet freedoms. And so then, of course, what we have after that, th th this, this conspiracy theory, just just somersaults into this whole next chapter in this about uh, this North Korea internet outage in wake of Sony attack. I absolutely love this one. So Barack Obama, you know, going on there threatening how he is going to retaliate against North Korea, but everyone saying, Short, short of rubbing this little maggot off the face of the planet, which as I say, I don't understand why the hell if Barack Obama wants to get his opinion poll numbers up, the quickest way to do it is to take out that little maggot. But uh, short of that, uh, they were saying exactly how is Barack Obama and the U.S. government going to respond. Well, they showed exactly how they shut down North Korea's internet. But of course, North Korea's internet is a goddamn joke. It's actually, as they say, an intranet, not an internet. <coughs> that, that little maggot over there in North Korea has pretty much shut down his own internet. And that if you try to go on the internet in North Korea, all you're going to get is that little maggots, uh, that, that little 1984 thing. But anyway, uh, Barack Obama and the U.S. government just gave North Korea and the rest of this planet, including anybody listening to this rant, that any time Barack Obama and the U.S. government wants to shut down anybody's internet, Anywhere on this planet, from North Korea to the good old USA, you better goddamn uh, believe that Barack Obama has the kill switch to do it anytime he wants to. And call me a conspiracy wacko. Anyone who does not believe that the U.S. government can't take down any, in, any country's internet on this planet, including our own, I've got one thing to say to you. I, I love it. So, of course, just as, as North Korea is not admitting that they hacked Sony, you, you better believe that uh, the, the government of the U.S. is not admitting that they were the ones who took down North Korea's internet yesterday just to give them a little taste. That, that if anyone wants to screw uh, with the USA, that uh, is how they're going to do it. But I want to go, but there were two very what is the mainstream media having to say about this? There's two of these uh, that I that I liked. Uh, one from the Atlantic magazine, and I'm going to put the links to these two stories. I think they're both. I, I'm I'm just going to put the links and and go over them briefly. This is the Atlantic's uh, spin on this. Did North Korea really attack Sony? from a fellow named Bruce Schneier, not sure who this is, who says, I am deeply skeptical of the FBI's announcement on Friday that North Korea was behind last month's Sony hack. The agency's evidence is tenuous, and I have 
a hard time believing it. But I also have trouble believing that the U.S. government would make the accusation this formally if officials did not believe it. Uh, I, I, I have no reason to agree with that second sentence. Uh, clues in the hacker's attack code seem to point in all directions at once, and he breaks it down. So, uh, you know, looking at, looking at who, of course, he's talking about, uh, it could have been an insider from Sony, and then he says the initial attack was not, the initial attack was not a North Korean government operation, but was co-opted by the government. Uh, but you know, th see, then he says there is still the very real possibility that the hackers are in it just for the L-U-L-Z. Never heard the word L-U-L-Z uh, in my entire life in 55 years with five years of college with a journalism degree. Never heard the word L-U-L-Z. And anyway, this is an excellent article. Uh, the final paragraph being, I worry that this case echoes the quote, we have the evidence, trust us story that the Bush administration told us in the run-up to the Iraq investigation. Identifying the origin of a cyber attack is very difficult and when it is possible, the process of attributing responsibility can take months. While I am confident that there will be no U.S. military retribution because of this, I think the best response is to calm down and be skeptical of tidy explanations until more is known. Yeah, telling a conspiracy theorist to calm down is telling a, uh, a Tasmanian devil to calm down. And this from, I think this is from New York Magazine. Sometimes it's hard to tell. I'm pretty sure this is from New York Magazine's Daily Intelligencer, and their story, What if North Korea did not hack Sony for alternate theories? Okay, blaming North Korea is convenient as it makes sense that they would be ad outraged by a film about the assassination of that little dictator maggot whose name I will not mention. And Sony can argue that it stood little chance against a foreign government's team of hackers. However, many do not buy that a country with limited technological capabilities would be capable of such an attack and wonder why North Korea has repeatedly denied any connection to it. This is one that I wonder, you know, if, if that little maggot actually pulled this off, he would be jumping up and down bragging about it. Uh, he would be making an absolute pest of himself, uh, patting himself on the back. And, and, and this is probably one time I do believe uh, that uh, slimy little snake in the grass. Uh, anyway, and then they start talking about, this is Robert Graham, CEO of Arata Security. 
uh, quote, there is no evidence pointing to North Korea, not even the barest of hints, according to this internet security analyst, completely throwing that out. Okay. There are also many doubts among those who don't usually subscribe to conspiracy theories. So here are the most popular theories about who really was behind the Sony attack. Okay, and I'm just going to read the bullets and anyone uh, interested in this can go on these two links. It was a disgruntled Sony insider out for revenge. This seems to be the Mark Dice, Alex Jones one. It was a group of hacktivists. This was Wired Magazine concludes that it is more likely the breach was the work of hacktivists such as anonymous rather than a nation state. I'm actually thinking I'm going to throw my hat in with that one. Then we have, it was the Chinese, and I like the last of the four, everybody did it. There is overlap in many of these theories, and it is entirely possible that the answer is all of the above. Many have said Sony was lax about its cybersecurity, and as Wired Magazine notes, quote, we cannot rule out the possibility that nation-state attackers were also inside Sony's network or that a nation like North Korea was supportive of some of these hackers since they shared similar anger over Sony. So, uh, we will never know the, the real answer to this one. This is going to be right up there with that missing airplane story. But you better believe that the wacky conspiracy theorists are going to be all over this one for years to come until the next cyber attack, which my guess uh, might even come before 2015. One of my predictions for 2015 is you better believe that you will see more of these cyber attacks. And hopefully a, another, uh, I, th this is more wishful thinking than, uh, than a prediction for 2015 that, you know, let's go take that little maggot out. You know, come on guys. Who have we taken out just in the past few years? We've taken out Gaddafi. We've taken out Saddam Hussein. We have taken out, well, unless you're a conspiracy theorist, uh, you would say we, we've taken out uh, that guy who, uh, what was his name? I'm thrilled to say Osama bin Laden. You know, right there. Guys, if we can take out Osama bin Laden, uh, Saddam Hussein, and... Qaddafi, why the hell can't the, the CIA or whoever go over there to North Korea and rub out this little maggot? This is one, uh, this is one peacenik leftist hippie who uh, is looking for one thing to cheer on Barack Obama for. Barack, in case you're listening to this, you have this peacenik, uh, eco-Nazi hippie's permission to send in your little henchman and take out that little maggot. You little chicken shit, what's stopping you? Uh, I, I assure you that the majority of Americans would be cheering you on. You sure as hell would have South Korea cheering you on. It, it, it might cause a little bit of a, a ripple with U.S. Chinese relations, but you know, I think we can weather that storm. Anywho, that's a whole nother rant, uh, but I'm going to wrap up this rant because I have to go make some banana cakes for the end times. Your old doomsday prophet, 
is going to wrap up his conspiracy theorist rant of the week to go make some banana cakes. Bye, guys.